In season one, he was third. In season two, he was second. And in season three, Lucas Degrassi is the Formula E champion. <laughs> Lucas Degrassi has been a title contender in every season of Formula E. And looking back on his journey in the championship shows us why he'll likely be a contender in the upcoming season as well. I'm joined with uh, Lucas Degrassi on uh, the starting grid, the very, very first one, the first Formula E race. Um, I've got some good news for you, Lucas. Tell me. You won the fan boost. No way. Yeah? <laughs> yeah it means I'm quite popular in Brazil. <laughs> we go green in Beijing. Heidfeld goes to the inside line, oh. and they make contact, and they're both off. And that's an accident for Nick Heidfeld, which means Lucas Degrassi is going to take victory in the FIA Formula E race here in Beijing. It feels great to be the first winner in Formula E. Degrassi's success continued in the opening races of Formula E, including a podium finish from 18th on the grid in Malaysia. Great job against Degrassi Bohemi on the podium from the back of the grid. He's a happy chap, look at that. To finish second from last is uh, something unbelievable. Down the start, finish straight, absolutely wheel to wheel. Degrassi up the inside, into the lead of the race, to take the win and take the lead of the championship. Another podium in Malaysia the following season fired Lucas into an end of season championship battle with Sebastian Buemi, where the title would come down to the driver with the fastest lap. We go green in London. It's a very good start from Degrassi. Oh, he hits the it's hit him. I don't believe it. The two championship contenders out at turn one. Boemi's still going though. All Boemi needs to do now is come into the pits, change over into his other car, set the fastest lap, and he could win the championship. Surely this is going to be the fastest lap of the race. 24.6, it's not. Is it going to be even faster? 24.58 to be Yes, 24.150. Great lap. And that's it. Sebastian Boemi, the Formula E champion. Again, proud of my guys and the teams. Everybody did the work. We did uh, what was possible. The opening race of the 2016-17 season in Hong Kong would prove to be memorable for Degrassi, when disaster in qualifying resulted in him starting the race from the back of the grid. Things got worse on lap one, marching Hua ran into the back of Nico Prost at Hong Kong Station, leaving Degrassi nowhere to go. Despite his damaged front wing, he pushed on, overtaking three cars in one go. But the mechanical flag was waved and Degrassi was forced to pit for repairs, dropping him from 12th back down to 18th and seemingly out of contention. He needs a safety car now. He must be absolutely livid now. A crash on lap 17 brought out the safety car. With nothing to lose, Degrassi pitted to change into his second car. So he's okay. not going to get to the end like that, is he? No. With well over half of the race to go, it seemed impossible that he'd be able to make it to the finish with only one car's worth of energy. Degrassi joined the back of the safety car queue and when the rest of the field had made their stops, found himself in second place. The Brazilian achieved the optimal balance of pace and efficiency to bring his car home in second, with only 1% of his energy remaining. It was a showcase on how careful energy management and clever strategy can turn an apparent hopeless race into a podium finish. Degrassi found himself in a similar position a few races later in Mexico City, when redemption seemed unlikely starting from 15th. And we go green in Mexico City. Good start from Oliver Turvey. A collision with Stefan Sarazan on lap one didn't help matters either. And when the safety car came out, Degrassi dove into the pits for a painfully long rear wing change. Give it a pull, now, lads. Yeah, the mountings, though. They've got to get the mountings replaced. That's the, 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 the whole point. Yeah, this is not going according to plan. This will feel like Forever. a day. Oh, he's <laughs> sitting there and he's got no concept of time. You know, a second feels like a day. There we go. Eventually, he got going and rejoined at the back of the pack. But it wasn't long before a second safety car was deployed to deal with Oliver Turvey's next EV car, which had retired from the lead. Sensing an opportunity, Degrassi's team brought him in for an early car swap. Just like in Hong Kong, it was a gamble that would require the driver to be conservative and controlled with his energy usage or risk not finishing at all. When the rest of the field pitted a few laps later, Degrassi jumped up to first place, with Jerome D'Ambrosio behind him on a similar strategy. Yet another safety car closed up the field, allowing the top two to save energy, but also allowing the chasing pack to close up. With 25% less usable energy than Jose Maria Lopez behind, Degrassi and D'Ambrosio were sitting ducks. Or were they?
Vern up the inside of Lopez. They have a little bit of a rub, and Lopez holds onto the place for the moment, but he knows that's ultimately for the race lead. Yeah, that's for the win. With Lopez losing time and energy battling jean eric Vern, Degrassi started to build a gap. Can he get it done this time? They rub wheels again. He gets pushed out wide. He cuts across. De Costa gets involved. Here comes the outside. Look, oh, he's lost it. Oh, he's lost oh, it and he's no. gone. Lopez bins it at turn one. And what a shame. And Buemi bins it with him. Incredible. Lopez now out of the mix. It was Vern's turn to have a go at the slow moving D'Ambrosio while defending from Sam Bird behind. But frustration was beginning to creep in. Vern's on the outside. Where's Bird? I mean, it's a joke, this guy. It's a fing joke. The D'Ambrosio roadblock was allowing Degrassi to cruise away with zero pressure. Eventually, the move was made. D'Ambrosio closed He's the door, it. but this has to be it now for Jean Eric Byrne. He's up into second place. But it was too late. Degrassi took the unlikeliest of victories thanks to excellent energy management, a strategy gamble that paid off big time, and a little help from Jerome D'Ambrosio. What a comeback for the champion in waiting. In season one, he was third. In season two, he was second. And in season three, Lucas Degrassi is the Formula E champion. Lucas, you are 2070 Formula E Drivers' Champion. Well done. Brilliant, brilliant. Lucas, we did it. We did it after three years. Great job, great job, team. We are the champions! We are the champions! With the title to defend, the start of the 2017-18 season didn't go to plan. Lucas Degrassi under pressure from Buemi. Buemi hits Degrassi. <laughs> Look at that. Rhea Wright's wobbling around, and that could be the end for the reigning champion in the first round of the season. Lucas Degrassi pulls over at the side of the circuit. Oh, Degrassi's got a problem. Lucas Degrassi is slowing. So oh, he's had another problem, has he? But a string of podiums later in the season would allow Lucas and his team to battle back into contention, including an overtaking masterclass in Switzerland. And we go green in Zurich. D'Ambrosio locks up. Degrassi goes around the outside of him. Right behind Sam Bird is Degrassi now going to be going on the attack. He's in that white and green Audi. <laughs> Lucas Degrassi has just set the fastest lap of the race. He can use oh, as we see. Lucas Degrassi yeah. up the inside of Bird. Lucas Degrassi up into third place. Here comes Degrassi up the inside of Lotterer at turn one. Is Lotterer going to try and hang it in up to dry? No, he's not. And Mitch Evans is the man leading this race for Jaguar, who are desperate to take a victory in their second season of Formula E. But Degrassi surely is going to cruise past here around the outside, and there's nothing Evans can do to defend. Zero. Degrassi comes in. Parks it on the cobbles, leaps out of one car, gets into the other. What a quick pit stop from Lucas Degrassi, He's two seconds quicker than his rivals. So there's Lucas Degrassi, leading by 6.6 .6 seconds over Sam Bird in second place. Degrassi has lost his reigning championship crown, but he is going to make history and win the first motor race in Switzerland for 64 years. You did it, you brilliant. Thank you, Zurich. Thank you, Audi Sport. We won! Woo! Yeah, perfect. Woo! Yes. Yeah! The final race weekend of the season in New York City saw Degrassi disobey team orders with the team's championship on the line. That is rude stuff from Lucas Degrassi. Guys, what is this? Oh, he's lunging for his oh, oh, back, Daniel Abt. Guys, two options. I get my position back or we fight. This is not fair. The check and flag falls. Degrassi wins an Audi 1 2 in New York. And it is the team's championship for Audi. Good job. Good job, team. Good job. A new season and a new car later, Degrassi gave us one of the most memorable moments in Formula E history in Mexico City. This is last lap. Try to do as much as you can. Because Lucas, uh, Degrassi up the inside and Verline goes straight no. on and he cuts the chicane and he doesn't stop and that's in the regulations and this is going to run and run. This is going to be a post-race investigation, I fear, At as to who is going to win the E Prix unless the BMW of Da Costa gets involved as well. Verline's got 1%. <laughs> 
Who's going to win it. the Mexico City Prix de Grassi goes for it. Verline covers. Here comes Verline out of the final corner. Zero. 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 De Grassi wins. De Grassi ah. wins. <laughs> yes. Yes. Perfect, man. What a race. So Lucas de Grassi victorious in the Mexico City Prix. A race win that would go down as one of the best of his career. Degrassi's second win of the 2018-19 season came in Berlin, starting the race in third and fighting his way to the top step of the podium. And there comes Degrassi into six. Lucas Degrassi up the inside, and that is second place. Degrassi up the inside, Degrassi into the lead in Berlin. But it is a victory for Audi again in Berlin. Lucas Degrassi wins. There's no question that Degrassi has what it takes to win a second championship, but will the upcoming season be the year that he does it?